Welcome to PeopleTech, the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. I'm Mark Pfeffer. Last fall, iSIMS unveiled its internal opportunity marketplace. It connects employees to internal job opportunities and helps them build a long-term career within the company. Essentially, iSIMS took its candidate experience and applied it to the employee experience, and then added capabilities to improve retention and reduce what it calls mobility friction. My guest today is Mark Brandau, iSIMS Vice President of Portfolio Marketing. We're going to talk about the thinking behind the marketplace, the impact of COVID on career paths for employees and retention for employers, and what changes in both are here to stay. All on this edition of People Tech. Hi, Mark. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. So, Mark, iSIMS just finished its 2022 workforce report. Can you tell me, broadly speaking, what you found out? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Mark. A, co- a couple things. Um, you know, we kind of, because we really collect and analyze so much data across hiring trends, we, we were able to really come out with some, um, I think, some interesting points. Um, you know, the first is everybody's heard about, gosh, we all talk about the great resignation, reshuffle, whatever you want to call the thing. Um, but the truth is the, the fact, you know, em- employees um, are looking to do things differently <laughs> and they're moving and they're trying to upgrade their careers and they're looking at other options. And one of the things we found out was, yeah, you know what? Um, That's really no joke. You know, 80% of companies said that workers leaving really impacted their business. I mean, that's maybe not such a big surprise, but, you know, that's eight out of 10 validating saying, yeah, this is a major problem. Um, I think a couple other things we found is that the gap between talent supply and demand is completely growing. there was a 97 point gap between job openings and job applications that we saw. That's the widest in the past two years that we've analyzed. Um, so I think, I think that's significant. The other things we started to see, just a couple more I'll give you is that I think we've all sort of seen shades of this, but salaries are gonna to continue to increase. Um, we've seen, uh, we've had C-level leaders indicate that uh, they plan to increase salaries on average about 7% this year to incentivize retention. And then I think one of the last things, um, again, you know, that we saw just to validate is that the flexible, the notion of the flexible workforce in terms of where people are working, that's here to stay. That's not going anywhere. Um, that's, that's, uh, we saw that in the responses in terms of, uh, flexible work schedules and offering remote work options. Um, those things are some of the, the highlights we, we saw uh, across the board. ISIMS being ISIMS, a, a solutions provider in the talent acquisition space. Hmm. What does all this mean for you guys? I mean, is it affecting your your product development or your product roadmap or your sales or what are you thinking? Sure. So, so you know, to be to be pretty transparent about this, um, uh, we're, we're fortunate in in one regard, but I want to make it very clear, you know. ISIMS, like a lot of great companies, isn't immune to these things, right? So sure, um, we, we've, um, we've, we've experienced some, some people coming and going to be very candid, very clear. Um, but I will tell you that we've also experienced phenomenal growth because we have become a very good destination, I think, employer for uh, a lot of people. A lot of people that um, both from a selling side and the opportunity for salespeople, as well as really on the technology side and the innovations we're providing and how we're going to market and doing some very innovative things. So um, we've been very fortunate to to continue to grow through the pandemic um, with both our customers and our employees. Um, But, you know, I think, I think we've been fortunate in that regard, uh, unlike maybe some other employers. You know, it's interesting. Um, In a lot of the interviews I've been doing recently, when I ask someone about, you know, the market or competitive landscape, they they end up talking about what's going on at their company, you know, in terms of hiring, in terms of 
you know, not not new products or anything, but just they talk about the company. Why is that? Why like why why are executives kind of going there now? I've never seen it before. Oh, you know, I I think that the the importance of and this is going to sound overly simplified, but it may be. But I think the importance of talent through the pandemic in terms of caring for them, where they're working, how they're working, are they okay? Are they healthy? Um, and now emerging from the pandemic with the great resignation and their desires to, you know, around remote work and the importance of um, a more diverse, equitable workforce. You know, we talked about compensation as a part of that and um, equality for that. But I think these things are all front and center. And I think that organizations now recognize and leaders now recognize that they have to spend, they have to treat employees like customers, like they would treat customers or frankly better, right? I think historically there is the view that Oh, executives in a company, you know, spend a lot of time with customers. And that's where the business is. But I think there's a there's now a, and maybe it took the pandemic, right? Maybe it took the pandemic to rattle the cages to say, the time you're spending with customers is important, but the t- you have to spend as much time, if not more, on making sure your employees are ready to go and are, are engaged and committed because that's what's going to make or break their business. So I think that's why you're, you're seeing that. I think, you know, it's, Pandemic was an inflection point for these things. No, you also just came out with your... Greetings from Evergreen Podcasts. We're rolling out a listener survey and we want to hear from you. The information in the survey will help us gather statistics and in turn make our shows more appealing to advertisers. I know most people don't like ads, but this is one of the only ways our shows make money and help keep their lights on. We promise it will only take a few minutes, but the impact on our podcasts will be tremendous. As a token of our appreciation, we'll randomly select one lucky participant each month to win an exclusive merchandise package from Evergreen Podcasts. Head to evergreenpodcast.com slash listener survey to help a show and possibly get some free stuff for doing so. We can't thank you enough for the support. Now back to the show. Or you just released your winter release. Mm. Um, what's, what's the lead on that? What's, what's the the most interesting or most important, um, you know, feature or work that's been done in it? Um, real simple. Uh, we have a lot of innovations in our releases, um, you know, uh, and the, this is just the highlight. So what I'm about to tell you is the highlight, but we have several, several things in the winter release, but the major um, thing is we're introducing the general availability. And this is something we've launched uh, and introduced into the market um, uh, last year, at the end of last year, at our um, annual Inspire customer event, but now it's generally available, is iSIM's Opportunity Marketplace. What's an Opportunity Marketplace? Why is this important? <laughs> well, just just following your last question, um, you know, the uh, really what the Opportunity Marketplace is and it allows for customers is really for them to re-engage and connect with their employees internally. You know, we've, as you said, you know, we were known in the talent acquisition space um, pretty well. And we have phenomenal solutions when we think about recruiting external talent. And what we're doing with our opportunity marketplace is bringing the incredible experiences we have for external candidates internally for employees. So what that means is if an employee is thinking about another position, or as we talked about earlier with the great resignation and upgrading their career or doing something different. This gives them the opportunity to go find and be alerted to and communicate with hiring teams and talent acquisition professionals about maybe their next great opportunity in, inside their company. Historically, it's it's been frankly easier, and this is cited in a lot of places, historically it's been a lot easier for someone as an employee to find a job outside their company than it is inside their company. And we aim to change that. And that's what we're doing with the opportunity marketplace. It's kind of, it, well, it's, it's a logical extension of the business, this you know, internal, internal market, mm. internal jobs. I mean, it's a lot like recruiting. It's just 
your target is. can have. Yeah, that, that's right. You're, you're, you're really targeting internal you know, yeah, employees instead of external candidates to a large extent. And I'll, I'll be very clear. We've always been in, um, in this arena, if you will. We've always provided internal career sites, right, where, you know, you have an internal career site and it might be a place for an employee to go to check a board, right, to say, do I have positions? Are there things listed? But what we're doing with the marketplace, it goes a lot further. It's no longer just a simple static career site. We're leveraging AI, right, in new ways to match uh, and identify employee skills and match them to opportunities and recommend opportunities to them automatically. We're applying things like our digital assistant um, so they can have new levels of engagement and be alerted and ask questions about internal opportunities. Things like texting, text engagement. Sounds crazy, right? Like, but when's the last time you ever thought about getting a, a text alert or having a text conversation about a position internally? It doesn't happen today, but we do that externally for candidates. So why do we do that for employees? Why are we? Why don't they get the same great experience that an external candidate has? So that's what you know. To, to answer your question, yeah, it's 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 just a little bit different audience, and we've already we've always provided some capability here around like an, in, an internal career site, but we're going a lot further with this. Um, did the pandemic impact your plans for this release? And is it is it sort of hovering or is it impacting your plans for future releases? Um, you know, in a weird way, it accelerated everything. Um, so the way I can say that is, and the reason I say that is because I said, and I alluded to this earlier about um, how we've been fortunate to go through the pandemic, but we've made several acquisitions of companies. And one of the companies we acquired was uh, named Easy Recruit. It was out of Paris, France. And they had some technology and capabilities that helped us accelerate our delivery of an opportunity marketplace, some of the things they already had. So that accelerated our roadmap and delivery of this. Um, Further, to answer your question about um, slowing things down, uh, and my answer about accelerating is customers, talent, and given you know where businesses are in their desire to grow, to transform, to re-engage with talent and this great resignation, that's accelerated our business. That that's what that's what has occurred. So we've had to accelerate everything, um, and that's what we've done. Um, so maybe it's you know, a little bit of right place, right time, but um, given what we are and what we do in the market, but we've, we've accelerated through this greatly. Mark, thanks very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Mark. My guest today has been Mark Brandad, the Vice President of Portfolio Marketing at ISIMS. And this has been People Tech the podcast of the HCM Technology Report. We're a publication of Recruiting Daily. We're also a part of Evergreen Podcasts. To see all of their programs, visit www.evergreenpodcasts.com. And to keep up with HR technology, visit the HCM Technology Report every day. We're the most trusted source of news in the HR tech industry. Find us at www.hcmtechnologyreport.com. Dot com. I'm Mark Pfeffer. The world's best-known investor and Wall Street expert Warren Buffett once said, Wall Street is the only place that people ride to in a Rolls Royce to get advice from those who take the subway. Mr. Buffett's quote is remarkably accurate, but how many people would rather receive advice from him than someone simply guessing? Welcome to Buy, Hold, Sell, your single source for Wall Street knowledge and profitable guidance. Please join me, Todd Schoenberger, and fellow trader Tobin Smith, as well as host Veronica Dudo, for a podcast known to move the needle for investors. Tobin and I are seasoned Wall Street executives with deep investment experience, and we are prepared to share our advice to those who choose to listen. Download Buy, Hold, Sell today on the Evergreen Podcast Network or your favorite podcast channel. Do you love news about LinkedIn, Indeed, Google, and just about every other recruitment tech company out there? Hell yeah. 
I'm Chad. I'm Cheese. We're the Chad and Cheese Podcast. All the latest recruiting news and insights are on our show. Dripping in snark and attitude. Subscribe today wherever you listen to your podcasts. We We out. out.